Hello everyone, and welcome to the Design Build Learn YouTube channel. I'm kicking it off here with my attempt at following Nighthawk and Light's tutorial on building a forge from a soup can. So I've put a link to that video in the description. I don't have access to a lot of tools right now. This is what I'm going to be using to make the forge in this video. So it might be helpful to some of you who also don't have access to very many tools. So this it was my first attempt. It did not turn out super well because I was impatient, I didn't let the uh, material dry, and I also used fireplace mortar, uh, which I don't think was a very good substitute for plaster of Paris. The difference here is that the fireplace mortar is activated on contact with oxygen, whereas plaster of Paris um, is activated by m being mixed with water, so it will dry through more thoroughly and faster. Some tools you'll need, uh, you could use a nail, I happen to have this punch, uh, in my toolbox, but pretty much you'll have to make a couple of holes here and here for the screws, and you have to make a larger hole in the side of the can. I've got to have a pipe nipple, a board just to protect the table from fire, and so you have something to screw the brackets into. You have to have the brackets themselves and the screws. A can doesn't have to be raspberry, but uh, raspberry is a good choice. Could also be pumpkin, that was the season. You've got a uh, propane torch, uh, plaster Paris, and the tools. And then over here we've got just some containers so I don't have to waste the raspberry filling. I'm going to take this guy apart and we can start building the new one. There we go, I've got it all taken apart. Got my uh, two bolts and nuts, washers, got the pipe nipple taken out, and I've got the can emptied. The raspberry jelly saved and I've got a bucket ready to mix up the plaster. So the next step is going to be to punch out the marking holes in the side of this can, punch out a uh, hole for the pipe nipple to go through, put those in, then I'm going to mix up the plaster and pour it on in. To mark the holes, you're going to want to set the can up about where you want it, and just poke the screwdriver hard enough to leave a mark. So now there's a couple dents. Then I'm going to take my spike, put in that dent, and just apply firm pressure as I rotate back and forth. Oh, you can see it's starting to come through there. Okay, so I've got a hole. Since this is a much rougher process than using a drill, you're going to want to stop frequently, see if the screw fits. And as it happens, the screw fits pretty well on the first try here. Let's go on to the next one. Once you have the screw holes in, you want to mount up the can so that you can mark the proper position to put in the pipe nipple. The idea is for the torch to be able to rest on the table next to the can and have the nozzle end of the torch come in at this sort of an angle. So we want to get the pipe nipple right about there. Set the torch on the table next to the can and mark that height where the torch comes in contact with the can. That's where you want to drill the hole so that everything can sit down on the table nicely. Come in an inch from the back and press just to make a little mark. At this point it'll be way easier to work with if you take the can back off and now we've got to make a hole the size of this pipe nipple. Using my steel punch I was able to make a hole this big just by drilling but you'll want to uh, just use whatever tools you have available, screwdrivers, wrenches, to kind of pry back that material. It's pretty thin, even though it's steel, it's easy to rip. You can see I went a little beyond the boundaries that I wanted to there. But no worries with that kind of thing. You're going to be filling this up with plaster so it'll still be well insulated. You'll just want to make the hole about the same diameter as the pipe nipple, and then it's pretty good at getting itself started in this thin, flexible material. You just want to get it in about half an inch to the end of the threads. This will help hold the torch and also make a hole in the plaster when that sets so that the flame can easily get into the chamber. Now that we have the nipple installed, it's time to reinstall the can onto the brackets to get ready to fill it up with plaster. Oh, look at that! Even that short blast of flame was enough to discolor the steel. This is caused by the oxide layer on the surface of the steel growing to different thicknesses as it increases in temperature. This works like a thin film, exactly like a soap bubble does. 
It reflects all of the wavelengths of light, and then certain wavelengths cancel out, resulting in different colors being reflected more strongly. At this point, I'm going to take equal parts of plaster and sand and put them into a bucket. Now I mix this up real well. So let's go ahead and add some water. Mix it up. I want it to stay pretty thick. All right, so there we've got it, a little kind of a sludge. Now I want to put on some gloves. Fully rubber gloves would be preferable. So you just drop that glop in there. Okay. The objective here is to make a little cave out of the plaster. A spoon works pretty well as a shaping tool. I actually mixed up my plaster a little bit too thin. It was having trouble sticking to the walls at first, but as it set, it became easier to form. As you do this, you just want to take your time. Make sure you get a nice, even coating. Any thin spots are going to allow the heat to get out more easily, and that's going to hurt the effectiveness of the forge. The plaster started to set pretty quickly and became a lot less soupy and more firm, so once I got it to this basic shape, I just went through and was able to scrape with the spoon rather than actually forming. One last step you've got to do before you can cure the forge is to pop out the little plug that will have formed inside of the pipe nipple. You can use a pen, but I had my punch. Got the torch up in the chamber of the forge. You can see the little bits already glowing. The outside of the can is still cool to the touch. It's getting a little warm. But overall I'd say it's doing a pretty good job of insulating, holding that heat in. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a lot of fun making this, so I hope you subscribe so you can see part two when I go to actually use this forge. Melt some metal.